Well, shalom, shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the New Moon Conference Call. Today is New Moon Day here, and uh, we're actually in the sixth month. And I am Barbara, and I'm one of your hosts today. And we just want to welcome all our family and friends that are here today on the phone or Internet, and all of you that are maybe listening to the YouTube recording. For more information about the Creator Sabbath, we invite you to go to the website, LunarSabbathDay.com. It's a great source of information about the Sabbath, and all the evidence is based on Scripture. There's a lot of videos and articles there, and uh, so much information. And you can also, if you want to join us for discussion or for fellowship, uh, you can go to the events page, which will tell you what days we're meeting. So today our discussion is about New Moon Days and Translation Days. And uh, the Creator's Calendar has two categories of days that do not exist in the modern papal pagan calendar. There's New Moon Days and Translation Days. And once these are understood, it's easier to grasp how time was originally calculated. So uh, sometimes this is... um, translation days uh, become a little bit of a stumbling block for some people that are new to the Creator's calendar. So that's why we're going to study about New Moon Day and Translation Day today to explain it more thoroughly. And this whole article is taken from World's Last Chance. Brother Gary said he'd help me read today. And here. For nearly 2,000 years, nearly 2,000 Parts of the Western world have regulated time by the same seven-day weekly cycle. This has created the illusion of Christians that the modern week, Sunday through Saturday, has cycled continuously and without interruption since creation. This is simply not true. The last country to officially adopt the modern Gregorian calendar, Greece, 1920. Although it was not until 1949 that the entire world was unified in its use, knowledge of time, how to calculate, how one to understand the significance of the new moons and the translation days that appear in the Bible method of keeping, timekeeping. Okay, so here's a map of all the adoption dates of the Gregorian calendar, and some of them were as late as uh, in the 1900s, so it wasn't like it just happened real quickly overnight. It took over 400 years for all the countries to accept the Gregorian calendar. (coughs) Calendar of creation is based entirely from its years to months, from weeks to days. It is all based on movement. The word month was originally moot and comes from the word moon. In ancient times, months were always based on the movement of the moon. Week, in turn, were divisions of month or lunation. Hebrew Sabbaton was, the cre- was celebrated at the intervals of seven days corresponding with the changes of the moon phases. The fact that the moon and weeks of biblical calendar are also based on the movement in nature created the biggest difference between Yahuwah's unisolar calendar and the pagan papal solar calendar in use today. It also creates the most confusion. And uh, I'll leave all these links below so you can uh, look up the reference links. <coughs> the modern calendar has months ranging in length from 28 days to 31 days, and the months are not tied to anything in nature. And so consequently, the weeks continuously cycling uh, without interruption from one month to the next month, from one year to the next. And that's what we're used to here. The grand calendar can have 28, 29, 30, 31 days. And uh, Mary, when it's time to read, I'll have you read the scripture. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Sorry. The creator's calendar. Mary and... 
The Creator's calendar, on the other hand, based each month on the movement of the moon. Each month begins with the new moon. The week beginning a division of months restarts its cycle every new moon. The Hebrew month is a lunar month, and the quarter of this period, one phase of the moon appears, has determined the week of seven days. This is the hardest point to comprehend when first beginning to study the calendar of creation. The modern solar calendar has a continuous weekly cycle. The calendar of creation does not. Mary, would you read the scripture verses, or the quote? This is a quote here. Right. The Sabbath, depending in Israel's nomadic period upon the observation of the Phases of the moon could not, according to this view, be a fixed day. And that was and from the Jewish Encyclopedia. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, Brother new, Gary. Yeah, new moons are significant components of the biblical method of timekeeping since they are the point in time which the weekly cycle restarts for that month. The phrase new moon scripture comes from the Hebrew word Kodesh, and the New Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible defines Kodesh as the new moon, by implication, a month. The New Strong's expanded dictionary of Bible words expounds on this, explaining Kodesh can be a month or a period from one new moon to another. In a related the word refers not so much to the measure of time as to a period of time or a calendar month. Okay, and scripture contains multiple references to new moons as the day on which the new month begins. The extremely close correlation of the month as a period of time linked to a lunation of the moon can be seen in the fact that there are even more scriptural references which use the word Kodesh to refer to a calendar month than there are to its use as the first day of the month. Kodesh is used 20 times in the Bible to refer to the first day of the new lunation and it's used 251 times to refer to a calendar month or a lunation. Okay, Mary, go ahead and read in the blue. Thus, in scripture, new moon can refer to the first day of the new month, the second period of time between one new moon and the next, and a calendar month. There, down below shows the quarter phases of the moon when it's new in the first quarter, full moon, and last quarter. So new moon can refer to uh, the first day uh, or a time between before the next and a calendar month through scriptures. And another Hebrew word that links a calendar month to the moon is Iserek, number 3391. I probably said that wrong. This word for month does not refer to a new moon, but does connect a calendar month with a lunation. In quote, a lunation, i.e. month, month or moon, unquote. Both words connect a month on the calendar to a lunation of the moon. Kodesh, new moon, month, lunation, Yerak, month, lunation, moon. Okay, Mary? As the new moon and the Sabbath or a lunar feast, the Passover with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, and Tabernacles or solar festivals, i.e. festivals which followed the seasons of the year. Okay. And you might be speaking a little bit too close to the phone. We're having a little bit of an echo. Okay. And uh, so okay. that's from, <laughs> you're doing, you're coming in loud and clear though, Mary. So okay. uh, that's from the Bible Dictionary. And here's the quote below. That was a quote that she read about the Sabbath and the feast and all connected with the moon. And this is a biblical calendar of the Passover month. Mm -hmm. 
new moons have no corresponding day in the Gregorian calendar with its months, divorced from anything in nature. Thus, many people are confused over what to do on new moon or how to observe it. Scripture reveals several things about the observance. In the time of the earliest prophets, the new moon stood in the same line with another lunar observance, the Sabbath. A Scribner Dictionary of the Bible, 1898 edition, page 521 of New Moon. 1. New moons were non-commerce days. 2. New moons were days of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. 3. New moons were days of worship. Okay, so here we go, the first category. New moons are non-commerce days. So when in apostasy the Jews represented having to close their stores for Sabbaths and new moons. And the Bible records this lament of these greedy merchants in Amos 8, 5 through 7. When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. Yahuwah hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Work done for the tabernacle, however, was And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, On the first day of the first month shall thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of congregation. Thus did Moses, according to all that Yahuwah commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, on the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacles were reared up. It's Exodus 40, 1 and 2, and 16 and 17. It is possible, but unknown, that other forms of work were acceptable to perform on the new moon. However, no work was generated income, no commerce was to be performed on the new moon, or any other routine labor that could be performed on another on the other days. Okay, another section. New moons were days of Thanksgiving. And we had a whole worship before we started our study today of praising and Thanksgiving on this new moon day. New moons were a time for family to share a meal and rejoice. Rededicating themselves for the new both Bible and extra biblical sources that two months they have timed family and some resources suggest a when women particularly are free from any burden. Other passages of scripture reveal that new moon, like Sabbath, for a time people would go to make special inquiries. Okay, Brother Gary, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, so I don't know if you need to get closer to a better um, connection there in your home or something. But anyway, thank you. So new moons are a, a time of family getting together and the blessings and Bible study. And it's just an extra special day to start a new month. And uh, the new moons, here's another section. New moons were originally days of worship. Here you go, Mary. In the, <coughs> excuse me. In the time of the earliest prophets, the new moon stood in the same line with another lunar observance, the status. Okay, so the quote below the reference, and I'll leave that below in the link. But where scripture is silent, history can shed additional light. An early edition of the Universal Jew Jewish Encyclopedia states that new moons were originally days for worship. Sabbath and new moon, Rosh Kadesh, both periodically reoccurring in the course of the year. 
and then we have that quote down below uh, on the reference. But the quote is, the new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent upon the lunar cycle. And I know that's Jewish Encyclopedia, page 410 of holidays. So both date back to the nomadic period of Israel. Originally, the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually, it became less important, while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, of peace and delight of the soul. Another type of section here for new moon is translation days. And now we're getting to uh, one of our topics that we wanted to discuss today is translation day. What's a translation day? Translation days like new moon. In the modern solar. Somebody's talking on To understand what they are in order to have a clear comprehension of Yahuwah's calendar. Translation day is an astronomical term that is not found in scripture. However, the fact that the biblical months were based on the cycles of the moon is sufficient proof that they exist in the Bible calendar. According to the United States Naval Observatory, a lunation is 29.5 days long. Generally speaking, this equates to every other month having 29 days and off months having 30 days. Illumination never has less than 29 days or more than 30 days. This is a, a demonstrable astronomical fact. So I have two calendars up here. I have the creation calendar showing uh, a 29th day. We know that's the last Sabbath of the month because the Sabbaths are 8, 15, 22, 29. Then we have that translation day, day 30. And uh, we're going to explain a little bit more about that. Astronomers use the term translation day to designate the 30th day of a lunation. It falls at the end of a lunar cycle on the black moon when the moon cannot be seen. Because time itself is continuously... Yeah. Many have believed that the system by which time is calculated must also be default, be continuous. This is an error of assumption. Originally, all ancient calendars were lunisolar and the weekly cycle of varying lengths. Restarting every new moon, a chronological dates and tests, the first calendars and continuous weekly cycles to Babylon around 600 B.C. Prior to that, no calendar utilized a weekly cycle that had no interruption. The weekly cycle restarted either at the beginning of the month, lunation, or the beginning of the year following five intercalculated days that closed the previous year but were not part of any weekly cycle. Okay, so and then here's another example of the weekly cycle. Between the quarter phases are seven days and a perfect 30-day month. There's seven days between each one showing the week. But the continuous weekly cycle since creation of the Saturday Sabbath has been proven false because there wasn't even a day called Saturday back then before the time of Yeshua. So the confusion over translation days has led some people to reject the biblical lunar solar calendar. The fourth commandment clearly states, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Eloah. Exodus 20, 9 through 10. Not understanding translation days has led up to the false assumption that in, in the 30-day month, there are a total of nine days between the seventh day on the 29th of one month and the next seventh-day Sabbath on the eighth of the new moon. This appears to create a problem because that time span 
is greater than the six workday interval between Sabbaths prescribed in the fourth commandment. However, because new moon days are a type of holy day, they are never more than six work days in between worship days. So there's uh, here shown in green the six working days and a Sabbath on the seventh day. Six working days, a Sabbath on the seventh day. And there's uh, you can times your weekly uh, week, seven times four is 28. And you see there's two days left over in the month. There's the transition, translation day, or transition day, I call it. Translation day and new moon day. So we're going to go a little bit further with this. Uh, go ahead, Mary, and read the blue. A lunar month never has more than 30 days, and it is never shorter than 29 days. Thus, the day following the 30th, which is a new moon, always begins the new month. There are occasionally consecutive months having 29 days or 30 days as regulated by the moon. So this black calendar here shows you a 29-day month, and then over here we have a 30-day month. So um, because there's a dent in the calendar now, um, we have 29 and a half day uh, months. So one month might be 29 and the next 30. But it's not always alternating. But in the, in the perfect calendar um, before 700 uh, B.C., there were 30-day months in all the lunar solar calendars. And something happened at that time that changed the calendars a little bit. So uh, we always have a 30 or 29-day month. The assumption that there will be too many work days between Sabbaths comes from not understanding that the new moon itself is a worship day that starts a new cycle of four weeks. Six work days, each followed by a seventh-day Sabbath. As the new moon begins the new weekly cycle for the new month, translation days are not part of the weekly cycle, even, even though they are a day, which a day, a day, translation days are always 30th the lunar month. Never be transferred. My screen just went out. Hold on. <laughs> okay, screen went out. So they can never be transferred. Yeah. Have you got it back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Translation days, which are always the 30th day of the lunar month, can never be transferred to the next month or counted as a date in the new month because the new month always starts with the new moon day, which is the day following translation. With the new moon, a new cycle of four weeks begin, interestingly enough, that confusion always arises among those in the West who have only ever known a calendar of continuous weekly cycle. In countries that have lunar calendation for their religious calendars, it is easier concept to grasp. Okay, so the 30th day, there's a sign up here, the old and the new, and I like that because the 30th day is part of the old month. Say conjunction happens at noon on the 30th day. Well, part of that 30th day will be part of the old month and part of it going forward to the new month. So the next day is new moon day. The 30th is just a... Uh, translation day, part of the old and part of the new. So all time must be accounted for. Thus, translation days are not non-days, as some have suggested. They have a date, the 30th of every 30-day month. The 30th of the month, like the first of the month, was not part of the seven-day weekly cycle. However, it was counted, and it did have a date. It is not a non-day. It has a date. It's a 30th. New Moon Day is day one. Okay, Mary? Yahuwah has always clearly specified by name or date which 
days are to be kept holy. Thus, all days, oops, I can't, just a minute, um, all, all days that are not specifically designated as holy days are work days. Uh, there are never more than six working days between the rest as new moons are rest days. Okay, now we're going to go just a little bit into the categories of days. So the Gregorian calendar, solar calendar, has different categories of days. They have work, school days, weekends, and when most people take off work, and national days. So uh, Gregorian has different categories of days. Well, the biblical calendar has three categories of worship days. Weekly, seventh-day Sabbath, that's number one. Number two, monthly, new moon days. And number three, annual, yearly feast days. And we did a video about this too, three types of days in scripture, and gave many scriptures and demonstrations for that. So I hope you'll go watch that. So, okay. Okay, uh, Okay. go ahead, uh, Brother Gary, again. Many people who have been convicted to worship by the biblical calendar observe the weekly and yearly, but the monthly observance of the new moon is frequently overlooked. This is partly through ignorance of how to observe the new moon. However, the importance of the new moon can be seen in the fact that the sacrifices prescribed for new moons were considerably more than those prescribed for the weekly seventh-day Sabbath. The sacrifices required for the seventh-day Sabbath were simply two lambs offered every, every day plus two additional lambs and a small food and drink offer. The sacrifices for the new moon, however, include two young bullock, a ram, and seven lambs plus a sizable food and drink offering in addition to the two lambs that were always offered every day. Okay. Now we're almost at the end. The calendar, reminder of creation. All of creation was designed to reveal truths about the creator and to draw the hearts and minds of man to his creator in grateful acknowledgement. The calendar devised by Yahuwah is divinely designed for that very thing. The seventh day, weekly Sabbath, is to be segregated, set apart, for the worship of the Creator. The word Sabbath comes from Shabbat, strong number 7673, and means to repose, i.e. desist from exertion. But it was not just the weekly Sabbaths that were to be set apart originally. Whoa, I've got my screen up there, sorry. But it was not just the weekly Sabbaths that were to be set apart originally. The monthly new moons and, of course, the yearly feast were all times to remember the goodness of the Creator. So uh, the four quarters of the moon supply an obvious division of the month. It is most significant that in the older parts of the Hebrew scriptures, the new moon and the Sabbath are almost invariably mentioned together. The lunar month is beyond question an old sacred division of time common to all the Semites, even the Arabs, who received the week at quite a late period time from the Syrians, greeted the new moon with religious acclamations. We cannot tell exactly when the Sabbath became disassociated from the month. And that's a quote. I'll leave that below. But you can see up here is a chart that shows Sabbath is at the quarter phase. And your week your weekdays are seven days apart. That's in the pink. Seven days apart. Moon phases are in this row. And then the day of the month, 8, 15, 22, 29 going along with the Sabbath and the phases. So Yahuwah's holy convocations, including new moons, are a time for renewed commitment to the Creator, a time to slow down, acknowledge the Father's gifts of family, friends, and other blessings. New moons 
bring a blessing to all who will set aside set aside this time to acknowledge the blessings of Yahuwah. They will be kept throughout all eternity as the saved rejoice in the endless blessing of the loving Creator. And here is our last verse, Isaiah 66, 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahuwah. So uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Gary and Sister Mary for helping with the reading. And I encourage everyone that's here to stand by for our discussion time. We're going to have discussion about New Moon and Translation Days. And thank you.